I get a ton of questions on the effects of crossing transonic when we're shooting to extreme long ranges. What effect does that have on our bullet's flight path as it goes from a speed that is above the sound barrier to that sound barrier and then below the sound barrier, which is subsonic. So I want to start out with this. I understand those questions. 20 years ago, it was pounded into our heads that when we cross that transonic barrier, the bullet destabilizes. It's hit with a, a sonic shock wave and it throws it off of its flight path or causes the bullet to tumble, so on and so forth. And we have an erratic flight pattern that we can no longer predict um, where that bullet is going to impact. So let's talk real quick about transonic. What is it? And where does it come from? It is something that's real. It is something that we can visually see. And I'll play a clip of that. But <clears throat> it comes from the early days of flight. We began learning about transonic when we first started flying faster than the speed of sound. And what happened is with an airplane, we had an airplane going from above Mach 1, and as it slowed down into that speed of sound area, it got hit with a sonic shock wave, and lots of, uh, lots of planes crashed, lots of pilots died during that time. And it is and was a very real thing. There are some differences that we'll talk about in a minute um, between an airplane and a bullet, but this is something that we can visually see. This is something that we do visually see in the field when we're shooting a bullet to a range where it stays um, supersonic. And I'll show a clip of that right now. This is a 10 inch plate at 700 yards with a 308 and you can visually see that shock wave following the bullet. So as we, as what happens is as we start to slow down, that shock wave catches up with the bullet and hits the bullet and then it passes the bullet. So when you see my my videos where I'm shooting past a mile, you don't see that bullet trace, what we typically call it. And the reason that we don't see that bullet trace is because that wave is no longer present at those ranges because the bullet is traveling at a subsonic state. So there's that distortion is no longer there. So here is a clip, again, 10 inch plate, 700 yards, and you can visually see that sonic shock wave. I'll play that right now. So what you're seeing in that clip is a distortion caused by that bullet being faster than the speed of sound. And that wave is the shock wave that hits the bullet as we go into that transonic zone, into that transonic area. So how is it even possible that we're shooting past those ranges? Well, we talked a little bit about flight and the effects that that sonic shockwave has on an airplane. Because even today, as a, as a fighter jet crosses from supersonic to subsonic or into that transonic zone, you get a lot of turbulence. Um, I'm not a pilot, but I have talked to a few that have talked about that very thing. And so, so it is a very real thing, but you have some differences going on with a bullet versus 
an airplane. The first one is with an airplane, you, you have wings, right? And so that sonic shock wave is hitting those wings. And obviously that's going to cause a lot of turbulence with a bullet. Um, you have something that you don't have with an airplane and that is gyroscopic stability. So depending on the twist rate, I'm going to just give you guys a quick breakdown on this. Depending on the twist rate that you're using, these bullets are spinning anywhere from, you know, 150,000 to 350,000 RPMs. So you have this heavy, sleek, cylindrical thing that is spinning at, you know, we could do an average there and say 250,000 revolutions per minute, which gives this a ton of gyroscopic stability that you're not getting with an airplane. So largely what I'm saying there is uh, what I'm seeing in the field versus what we were taught 20 years ago are two very, very different things. And I thought the best way to demonstrate this is to show you guys some of my misses at a ridiculously long range. So I've got two clips, two different days that I'm going to play. Um, at 3,100 yards, a little bit over 3,100 yards. And you guys can decide whether or not you're seeing the same thing that I'm seeing. But I am seeing a very predictable flight path. Uh, where the challenge comes in is in the rest of our environmentals in these two clips you'll notice it takes about nine seconds for the bullet and, a, and that's just a rough nine seconds but about nine seconds for the bullet to reach the target and target area so where i'm going with that is that bullet's in the air for nine seconds and the environmentals are literally changing while that bullet is still in the air. And we'll talk, I'll play those two clips real quick and we'll talk about that in just a moment here. In these clips, the way that I, uh, the way that I did them, I have the raw footage and I have an overlay underneath that of a cropped version so that you can better see exactly where those impacts are taking place. Um, the reason that I chose these two clips, both of them were done with a digital optic and there is a time and date stamp on that digital optic so that you can actually count that eight and a half seconds to nine seconds of flight time that it takes for the bullet to get there. And I'll play those right now. All right, we will start with a off right edge we'll go one more
and just off the left edge. So in that first video, it is very easy to see on the lower portion, which is the cropped version, um, exactly where those bullets are impacting. I want to say the target that I'm using for that is a 30 inch target at 3,100 yards. So um, that is a sub MOA target at 3,100 yards. You can see the time and date stamp in the raw footage up at the top, and it is very easy to identify where those misses are hitting because where I shoot is in a desert slash salt flats area. So those bullets are hitting sand and salt and or sand and or salt. So it's very easy to see where my misses are one of the things that and that that is one of the things that allows me to shoot with a smaller caliber because i can see very easily as long as that ground is not wet where my misses are and we'll talk about that in just a little bit here but now i'm going to play that second clip this is a different day um on the first one i was using a uh, a uh, Caldwell flashbang impact indicator. That's what the green light is. On the second one, you'll see a red light. That is a Hornady hit indicator. And I'll play that clip right now. All right, five shot string, 3,143 yards. off right edge impact fuck yeah six arc three thousand one hundred forty three yards dnt zulus See if we get three in the air at the same time. Right edge, right edge, right edge. Fuck. That was fun. Anyway, we accomplished our goal impact at 3,143 yards. So I'm, I'm trying to keep this video short and sweet, um, but this, this is something that these are not isolated incidents, right? Um, this is something that I've seen in the field literally thousands of times now, um, crossing that transonic barrier. Um, what I see is the bullet is following a predictable flight path. The challenge comes in at the nine seconds of flight time for it to reach that target area. And I think the first video demonstrates this the best because that day I had a headwind and it was a ridiculous headwind. We were gusting between 12 and 15 miles per hour. And you can hear that very well in the video. And so where I'm going with that is I would encourage you to take your ballistic calculator. You can hear those gusts of wind and plug in whatever you're shooting at 3,100 yards and change your wind speed by three to five miles per hour, which is what you're hearing in those gusts and see what that does to the flight path of your bullet. I think that's a great demonstration of it. Those are the factors that are out of our control, right? Um, in the second video, you see the, the first, you can, you can chalk the misses up to human error, honestly. I make the first shot, um, I miss that, and then I make my correctional wind call, 
which is correct. I impact on target and then I rush three shots. This is with a gas gun, right? And what I was trying to do is pull off a triple tap um, at, at 3,100 yards, which I've not, not done yet. That'll be coming up soon because we will eventually get that. But you have three rushed shots and you can revert back to the video if you want to see it. My wind hold was not correct. So uh, that, was, that was my bad. But I, I guess bottom line, what I'm seeing, guys, is in the field, what I'm seeing is that as we cross that transonic barrier, that the gyroscopic stability of this bullet or any of the ones that I have tested at that range um, is, is keeping this on a, a fairly predictable flight path. You know, with an airplane, you have wings and you don't have any gyroscopic stability. So where I'm going with that is I'm much more concerned with things like my wind call uh, being correct, my firing solution being correct. I'm a lot more concerned with whether or not my extreme spread and standard deviation are low, low. I am much more concerned with uh, the consistency of the ballistic coefficient of whatever bullet I'm using at the time. So what I'm seeing in the field is that that crossing has very little effect on the predictability of the flight path of the bullet. And I'm not the only one that is seeing this. Um, if you watch Mark and Sam after work, Mark does a very detailed explanation of what he's seeing in the field. And it's very similar to what I'm seeing in the field. And there's several others. I think that as extreme long range has become more of a thing, um, we're beginning to understand things that we didn't understand 20 years ago. And so I put a lot more weight into things like my firing solution and making sure that my inputs into that firing solution are are correct they have to be extremely precise at those distances um, these are very challenging shots and that's kind of what the the addiction is for me is you know these are hard shots they're they're shots that we miss more than we hit but the bullet is following a predictable flight path and uh, that's the challenge of it you know you guys probably wouldn't even tune into my channel if they weren't extremely challenging shots nobody really cares about uncle george shooting at a hundred yards because anyone can do it so um, I hope that you guys can glean a little bit of information off of this video. I hope that you guys can look at this with an open mind and maybe there are things that we're beginning to understand now that we didn't understand in the past. So hope this video blesses you and helps you in a way that maybe you'll have the confidence to try something that you haven't tried before and be able to pull it off because it's a very rewarding thing. Thanks a bunch for watching and God bless. Have a great day.